Should we have a look at the next one? The next question would be, I think C would be E. Do you want to do this one? Yeah, this yeah. is pretty straightforward. Yeah. This is pretty straightforward. So, wait, I just want the, the main question I have with it is, you, you know when you find y intercept, right? Yes. That you always just make x equal 0. And so in that question, it would just be absolute values minus 2, right? Negative 2. Mm. Would the negative, would the absolute values still apply to the negative 2 or would it like just disappear? Okay, well, so you're saying, I want to find a y intercept, right? So for y intercepts, by the way, I always like to say, like, what are you doing, right? Um, I'm going to let x equal 0. A lot of people will just say x equals 0. And I'm like, but why? And then what do you do? And you, you're going to let y equal 0 in a minute. And which one's which and why? Okay, this is y. So I'm going to, like you said, I'm going to substitute it in. This is 0 minus 0 minus 2. This is the absolute value of negative 2. There's no reason for the absolute value to like, not be taken into account. So y simply equals 2. Which is exactly what you can verify if you, if you graph the, the done thing. Can we factorize this? Mm. Can we factorize it? Yeah. X we can, two, right? It's the absolute value of, what am I going to put in my bracket? X minus 2x plus 1. X minus 2 plus 1 is perfect, right? So therefore, I can read off my intercepts immediately. There's a negative 1. There's 2. 2, right? Now, ordinarily, I would say, oh, this guy's concave up, so it's going to be this happy parabola. But I know that even though this part and this part are okay, this part down here, the absolute value will apply, and it goes whoop, and there's your two. Okay. Where can we find my practice questions? Um, in the, in, yeah, I would go to the there's exercise. There's like three of them in the one, one of the reasons why I, I never assign all the questions in an exercise, number one is because it'll take you forever. Number two is so that if you're like, oh, 3A is the stuff I had trouble with. Well, you can go back to 3A. There's still more questions in there you can attempt. Okay. Should we have a go at B? Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Okay. So what's the actual question that you're asked to do with that? Because I'll just see, I'm just, there's an equation there. What do I do with it? Do you want me to graph it? Yeah. Is that what you yeah. Graph it, yeah. Sure. I'm pretty sure graphing it is the final. What do you have to do? Like. Okay. Result? Yeah, no problem. So when you think about this, there are, every time you see an absolute value, there are, it's a, two things in disguise, right? So the question is, what are the two things and where? Okay. So I'm going to say there's a case here and a case here. Oh, by the way, that uh, coefficient in front of the that's two? Of two, yeah, it's not a seven. Yeah, that's cool. All right, I guess. Now, it would have been gross if it was seven. Now, if you have a think about this, this is always going to be the same thing, it's not changing. But this guy over here, it's, a, it's this Jekyll and Hyde, right? It's like sometimes it's x plus one, sometimes it's minus x minus one. Okay, so you tell me, when does it switch over? When does it decide to be one or the other? What's the turning, the changing point? <coughs> now, this is, you've got to go back to a graph. You've got to be able to quickly graph this in your head. And if that, that part of there is the only thing I'm asking you about, it's pretty straightforward. Think of regular x plus one without absolute values. Regular x plus one goes like this and keeps going down to negative one. Sorry, wait, no, other way, I, I'm doing x minus 1. This is x plus 1 over here, and then it rebounds. Right, there you go. That's the absolute value of x plus 1. This value here is negative 1. On the left, it's something. On the right, it's something else. Okay. So I'm going to say now, for the left-hand side, x is greater than negative 1. What is this thing going to be equal to? Well, it's y equals 2x plus 1 minus... What's the equation of the left-hand branch? Minus x. It's minus x minus 1, isn't it? It's the, it's the decreasing one, so therefore minus x minus 1, like so. Well, uh, some double negative happening here. So this is just plus x plus 1, do you agree? So that is 3 outside of x plus 1. That's 3x plus 3. So I'll keep that in my mind on the left-hand side. Now I think about the right-hand side. What's going to be different? Well, you can see... <coughs> Instead of having minus, and then you do the negative case, I'm going to go y equals 2 of x plus 1 minus the positive case. That's x plus 1, just regular. <coughs> Is that okay? All right. Now, I'm just that's all I need to graph this thing. So, oh, don't run out that entire question. So, I'm going to just use this space. So, negative 1, that's the point at which things change. So, x plus 1, I already know what that looks like. Right? So I'm just going to graph that. That's y equals x plus 1. So you got that from that original 
operation at the start. Yeah, correct. So if that was like a negative, like so if that if that was the other branch at the start, and the question is the graph it the other way. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But I said, look, on the right of negative one, that's what it is, and that's very simple to graph. On the left of negative one, this is negative one here. Uh, what does y equals three x plus three look like? It's a steeper graph. It's just steeper now. If I were to graph the whole thing, it would look something like this, right? Uh, if that's two, three, something like this. Do you agree that has to be y equals three x plus three, right? There's the intercept three, and it's got a gradient of you run, your run is one, your rise is three. That's a gradient three. But of course, I don't actually want this part, do I? This part up here. Why don't I want it? Because it's a domain. It's outside that domain, so I only want this part down here. So y equals 3x plus 3, I'm done. There's the graph. Okay. How do you feel about that? Is that all right? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Should we have a go at this binomial one? Or yeah. do you have any other absolute value ones before I move on? Wait, so um, for that, why do you just, um, you know how you just go off the absolute, absolute value graph? Like you say, like your domains are for x is less than minus 1 and x is greater than minus yep. 1. Yep. So why do you just like, why can't uh, you base it off the two, two of x plus one? Yeah, okay, so the idea is, see this guy here? This guy is always two times x plus one, no matter what value of x you put into it. It's always that, it doesn't change. No matter what domain you supply, you can say x is less than negative one, x is less than negative 100, x is greater than four or pi or whatever. This guy doesn't care, he'll always be that. It's this guy that decides to be this or that, depending on what value of x you supply. Okay? If you supply a value that's less than negative one, it'll tell you this. If you supply a value that's greater than negative one, it'll tell you something else. So this is the part of the equation that changes. This part does not change. So that's why I ignore that part when I'm thinking about the domain. This is the only part that's relevant. Okay? So for any graph like that, you just like, so if it's like x minus three, your domain would be for x is greater than r. Uh, so if your question was this, you ask yourself, when does this thing change? When does it become one graph or another? And the answer is, this guy changes at x equals three, right? At x equals three, it's exactly zero. So that means to the left of three, it's negative, this changes. To the right of three, it's positive, so then it's something else, okay? So you just look carefully at whatever absolute values you've got. You can have more than one. We've seen this before, those hard questions, they will look like this. Let's just put them both to, that was a minus. No, that was a plus, that's fine. Uh, something like this, right? Because there's two absolute values in here, it changes from negative two and negative two but it also changes from one and one on the left and the right. So that's why this guy has more cases, it's more complicated than this, okay? So you look at every absolute value and you say, okay, well, it's gonna change. I gotta find out the point that it changes. And in this case, that's what it is.